word today, Lord yes, God. Lord. Have your way, have, let your will be done. Yes. And Father, may we forget about everything and focus on you this morning. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
There has been so much negativity that has come in to the community and into the house of God. There has been so much that has been bringing confusion into the house of the Lord, bringing confusion into God's people because they don't really know which way to go or what to do. There's even division among the church. You see some churches that are rebelling, then you see some that are trying to, you know, at least follow somewhat of the guidelines, and then it just, it's, it's very difficult in these times. But right now there is three weeks that we're supposed to be having this quarantine and implemented the restaurants are all closed and the different things that are happening, right? So we're having our outdoor service. And uh, so they told us we can't have more than 30 people in an outdoor service. Did you know that? Yeah. And every you can I find that lying devil Amen. who tries to, to bring disunity and bring, you know, disharmony into the church and into the people of God. And we do, we need to stand up. Amen. We need to stand up for what we truly believe. And the question is this morning is, do we know what we believe? Do we know what's really God's word and how it is established on our heart? Do we really know what that is? Or are we being waiting to be told what to believe? And you know, unless there is a preacher, yeah, the people will not hear. And so that's you and I this morning. It's not just every pastor, but it's every believer being a voice for the kingdom of God Amen. and the salvation message to bring forth to the people who do not know what God's word says, to the people who are lost and dying. And so if we ourselves are unfamiliar with the word of God, if we are unfamiliar with the salvation message, if we are confused it is going to detract and it is going to cause us not to be the voice that we should be Amen. as a believer. Amen. But when we know the word, there's like this, all of a sudden, this strength. I mean, you can take one scripture, break it apart, and really put it in your heart. And all of a sudden, you feel very confident Amen. about speaking to someone about the message of Christ. Because, because you know and you believe with all your heart what that is saying. And nothing is going to stop you. And that's that's where it comes in, you know. I think back, you know, uh, in, in uh, some of the old Christian movies that talk about the Bibles are being taken away. And there are other countries right now in the world that the Bibles have been taken away. That Bibles are being snuck in, you know, to underground uh, places for people to get the message. And so what happens, the day comes that they take our Bibles away from us. Because I'm looking, I put on the television to look at a nice, good, homely movie. So what do I put on the Hallmark Channel? But now even Hallmark is showing uh, marriages of homosexuality and movies and families and uh, different things. And I'm putting that on and I'm thinking, well, this is this is endorsing homosexuality. This is endorsing, I and mean, they may not be having premarital affairs, or or maybe even you know uh, extra you know you know post marriage affairs or anything like. They may not be having any of that, but they are still doing other things that had never once been. And if you remember back in the 1950s and 60s, come on now. I wasn't born yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> But my mother told me eh? <laughs> the movies and that would come out back then, I mean, they would be fade out. You would see a man and a woman kiss and then it would fade out and they would go like in that movie from here to eternity. I think it's the one on the beach and, and you see the man and the woman laying like hugging and then it fades out into the ocean and you're looking at all the waves from the ocean. You don't see them kissing. You don't see them fooling around. You don't see them doing things because it was like, that's personal. That is private. That's between a husband and a wife. Yeah. That's between God and them. 
you know, you're not out and about, you know, doing these things. It's like when a woman, you know, is walking around and showing all her rear end and, and, and busting out on her top and, and causing every man to walk by and see her and even every woman to want to look at her as well. These are the things that are like, are just so, you know, out there now and accepted. And if you go back into the land with um, uh, Moses' nephew, Lot, and not Moses, Abraham's love, nephew, Lot, and he's there, and he's in this city where all this debauchery, all this worship and idols and, and, and sen sensuality and all these things that are happening in, back then that are, are going on, and, and, and you know what Lot was? Can I, can I tell you just a little bit something about Lot? Lot was what they called an, uh, an elder as sitting at the gate. What that meant was he sat at the gate and he had first pick of anybody who came in to take them to himself. Even though God spared him and saved him because a life can be converted and we don't have to stay in our old ways Amen. and our old nature. But that's what he was. He sat at the gate and he saw who came in first. He had first pick of sin. First pick of those that were coming in. And and even back, uh, if you remember, there was a situation where the angels uh, had come in uh, to sit down. And they said, oh, come to my house and sit here with me. And one of the things is um, they were trying to get the people like, to, to have the angels that were offering all the people, like, have your choice to the angels, to the angel of the Lord. Have your choice. It was like the mentality. It's like, how dare you offer if a, there was an angel standing right here beside me, so big and tall, because they are. And I'm saying, oh, uh, are you, like, in the mood for anything? Um, hey, have your feel. You know, anything that you want. This is the mentality of the world that was then, and that world was destroyed. That city of Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. We look back in the days of Noah, it was destroyed. We see all these things that are happening, and we're seeing a lot of the same things that are happening even in our communities here. It, it, it's the disrespect to God Almighty. Amen. As we stood out in the... Amen. Uh, corners yesterday and across over here at the uh, police department you know they're holding signs and they're showing signs in the street and people are going by and you always have to have at least one that is going to throw out a comment something negative or something that's rude or something that's you know uh, unbecoming but the disrespect that the people in the community and the world has toward God is um it's unbelievable. And yet, I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen these things with my own eyes. You and I see these things every single day where you wanna pray for somebody, you wanna tell somebody, and how many times have you been turned away? How many times have you been told, oh, no, I don't believe, sorry, you know, go to the next person, skip me, forget me. And so these are the things that are happening in our, in our community. and. Uh, we're in a spiritual battle, brothers and sisters. We're in a spiritual battle, and, and it's it's a, an ugly place to be in, but that's what it is, and that's where we're at. And, and we got to just do our best to be able to um, fight the spiritual battle. So I want us to open up this morning to the book of Joshua. Book of Joshua. We're going to go to chapter 10. Now, basically, what has happened here is that the Gibeonites were tricked, um, or they tricked the Israelites. The Gibeonites tricked 
the Israelites, into making a peace treaty with them. But when we go back to the word of God in Deuteronomy chapter 7 for your note taking, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 1 through 6, it's in that passage that the Israelites were not supposed to make a treaty with them. And it was a direct violation of what the Lord had commanded Israel. So somehow the Gibeonites, Gibeonites in 1 Chronicles chapter 9, they tricked the Israelites into making a peace treaty with them. Okay? Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 10 through 18, the Gibeonites, they themselves knew that they were not supposed to make a treaty with them. They knew that it was the Lord's command and were disobedient and did it anyways. Okay? Now, I, I say that because this is the Christian life that we live today. Not everything always is going to fall in line. And you're going to have people that are going to rebel. Do you see that happening right now? Amen. You see people rebelling. Well, we saw it for a while there with all the masks and the different things, right? You, you saw different things that were happening. People... That's something simple. But what about, you know, what God's word says or the do's and don'ts or even just take, for example, in Exodus chapter 20, when it talks about the Ten Commandments, what about that? Those Ten Commandments, do not kill, you know, uh, don't commit adultery, Look, honor your mother and your father, um, thou shalt have only one God. But how many gods do you see all over the world? And so you see the rebellion that, that has happened in so many different areas in life now as a Christian so the battle is is a reality for every one of us on a daily basis you face battles day after day after day how many of you can say amen to that amen, amen. so turn with me I'm going to read right there in chapter 10 verses 6 through 14 and then I'm going to turn to the book of Ephesians but in chapter 10 6 through 14, this is what it says. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. The men of Gibeon quickly sent messengers to Joshua at his camp in Gilgal. Don't abandon your servants now, they pleaded. Come at once, save us, help us. For all the Amorite kings who live in the hill country have joined forces to attack us. So Joshua and his entire army, including his best warriors, left Gilgal and set out for Gibeon. Do not be afraid of them, the Lord said to Joshua, for I have given you victory over them. Not a single one of them will be able to stand up to you. Amen? And uh, it goes on in verse 9. It says, Joshua traveled all night from Gilgal, and he took the Amorite armies by surprise. And the Lord threw them into a panic, and the Israelites slaughtered great numbers of them at Gibeon. Then the Israelites chased the enemy along the road to Beth Horon, killing them all along the way to Azekah and Makeda. Amen? I'm going to stop right there. Well, verse 14. I'm sorry, going to verse 14. As the, the Lord threw them into panic, and then it says in verse 11, as the Amorites retreated down the road from Beth Horan, the Lord destroyed them. What does it say? With a terrible hailstorm from heaven that continued until they reached Azekah. The hail killed more of the enemy than the Israelites killed with the sword and on the day of the lord the the on the day the lord gave the israelites victory over the amorites joshua prayed to the lord in front of all the people of israel and he said let the sun stand still over gibeon and the moon over the valley of ajalon so the sun stood still and the moon stayed in one place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. Is this event not recorded in the book of Jashar? The sun stayed in the middle of the sky and it did not set as on a normal day. 
There has never been a day like this, one before or ever since. When the Lord answered such a prayer, surely the Lord fought for Israel that day. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, Father, right now, I pray, Father, that your word, Lord God, that you give us an understanding. Yes. Ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, so when I talk about that we're facing battles, that they're a reality in our life on a daily basis, and reading this passage of scripture and seeing what happened in this story, we can also believe that it's true that God fights our battles for us. Amen. And so he fights them for us, and he's right there alongside of us. Now, I'm going to say this, that if I say, Lord, I can't do this on my own, I need you, Father God, right now, Father, please. He's there, and he rescues me, and he fights that battle because I yield and I give it to him. But I also use every possible gifting and talent or anything, if, if it's in a, in a natural way, in a, in a natural habitat, or, or, or work experience, or, or maybe with and whatever words God puts into my mouth to say or to speak in order to fight against these things. But no matter what, in, in the spiritual God is fighting our battle for us. And I'm going to tell you this, that on every day in our life and in our walk with the Lord as we're facing these battles, that you're going to find yourself that it's usually spiritual battles that you're facing. More than any, because how many of you are physically fighting somebody on a daily basis? How many of you are pushing somebody and telling somebody off and arguing and cussing and telling all these people off? Most likely it's not. If you're a believer, you try to contain yourself and hold back from um, involving yourself in physical uh, uh, abuse and physical uh, confrontation. confrontation, yes, yeah. or anything like that. But in the spiritual sense, you're, you're constantly having to fight. Amen. So, but it's calling on the name of the Lord. And the word of the Lord says in Joel chapter 2, that when you call upon the name of the Lord, it says that he shall deliver you. He delivers you. He delivers you. Not only does he deliver you, he also saves you and he saves even your household. Call upon the name of the Lord. This is what he says. Now, when we go into the book of uh, Ephesians, and you're all very familiar with this passage about the armor, but I'm just going to share one scripture, one verse in Ephesians chapter 6. Let's look at verse 12. And this is what it says. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Amen? Amen. 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 That's what we're fighting against. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Look at what it says in verse 4. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. Amen? Amen. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. Are you doing that? Are you fighting everything with your own strength, with your own knowledge, with your own power? It says we use God's weapons. Amen? And then so we, we see the, the battles. We, we, we never have to face our battles alone, ever. And I thank God for that. Amen. Because, you know, if you think about that story or that poem, uh, The Footprints in the Sand, you see the one foot of print, footprints walking in the sand on the beach on the shore and you see the person in the poem is saying lord you know where are you why have you left me and he says when you only see one foot of footprints it's simply because i have picked you up and have carried you through and that's what he does day after day when we're feeling uh, attacked when we're feeling our weakest when we feel our families are being attacked, when our children are being attacked, with sicknesses and disease and different things that are happening, the attacks on the on the bodies, 
that are even in our own self that we're having to fight in mentally to keep it together keep our mind on the lord you know that, that we're trying not to you know uh fall prey uh into you know the world of uh thinking uh the mind frame that mindset you've got to constantly be fighting against it you have to be aware of it you cannot be conformed into this world because romans chapter 12 says be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind amen renew your mind renew your mind daily daily because if you're watching tv if you're watching the news if you're watching things that that are secular if you're listening to things that are secular you're you're being influenced by the world you're being influenced so you need to be strong in god's word to know what's right and what's wrong amen now Go with me to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Because we don't face our battles alone. Yeah. Look at what it says in verse 5. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Yeah. Don't tell me you've never felt alone. Amen. Don't tell me you've never felt, you know, like lost. Don't ever tell me that you've never felt a little bit confused on what you should do or on decisions that you've made. We have all have been there. We all take it to the altar. We all lay it down at the feet of Jesus, hoping that he will make it very clear that we will have such clarity inside of our yes. minds when we choose to do something. It's simply because we have been compelled by the Holy Spirit, knowing that I have peace about it in my life, God, because you spoke to me. And you know, you're going to have family and friends that are going to not agree with you on the decisions that you make. <laughs> and they're always going to give you their opinion. But when you can have peace, and I'm talking about the peace of God, that's what's going to make the total difference in you choosing to do something and making that decision to follow through with it. Amen. Go with me to... Um, Hebrews, right here, I, I read chapter, did I read verse 5 already? Yes. Verse, okay, verse 5. I go to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Look at what it says in verse 20. We're not alone. It says, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, yeah. even Lord. to the end of the age. Yeah. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Amen. God is always there with us. Go with me to Psalms the book of Psalms, and let's look at Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Verse one. God is our refuge and strength. Amen. Always ready to help in times of trouble. Amen. Yeah. Are you in trouble right now? Are you facing any hardships? Amen. Any dilemmas in you, in your family, in physically, or with your loved one, or your finances? You know how many people are out of work right now? Since, since this all started in my household, 
for me, I was the only one working until the tax season was over and my income was very limited. And then my son started working right as soon as I finished, but my daughter and my son-in-law have been out of work. And there's hardships in every family throughout this world that is happening with this virus and the things that have been shut down and the limitations that have been put on us. And there's so much that is, that is happening. And I'll also tell you this, the integrity of the world and the integrity even of Christianity has been tested even for those who have applied for unemployment and as a Christian believer milked the system. And even in the world, all those who have milked the system and have taken thousands and thousands that truly did not belong to them. And I'll tell you why they did it, because they were fearful that God would not provide for them. They were fearful thinking that they could do it because they didn't know how else they were going to get any kind of money or have any kind of provision. But when you're a believer, God always, always, Amen. always Amen. comes through. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, always. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, go with me to Isaiah, chapter 43. We're going to look at verse 2. When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Thank you, Lord. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Amen? Amen. That's the God that we serve. Thank you, Lord. He's with us through the waters, through the rivers, through the fire. Through He doesn't let us drown. He doesn't let us burn. He's there, right there with us. And when the battles come our way, the Lord comes to our aid. And he fights for us. Amen? Amen. Thank you. He fights for us. Turn with me to Philippians. Be encouraged and believe God's word today. Amen. In Philippians chapter 4, as we look at verse 6 and 7. Because even in the battle, even in the heat of the battle, you can have peace in God. Amen. Look at what it says in verse 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Yes. Amen. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. Amen. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Wow. Those are, those are awesome scriptures. Yes, they are. <laughs> you ever hear of like a Nike um, or any other kind of brands, right? They have their own brand. They have their own stuff. It's almost like even uh, cattle that are, are you know, singed, branded, right? With that awesome, right? But I, I want you to understand that this piece that we're talking about is his brand of peace. Amen. There's nothing like it. It's the only one, one of a kind peace, and He gave it to you and I Thank you, Lord. to experience that, to have that on a daily basis in every situation. God has given us His brand of Amen. peace. Thank you, Father. Amen. That's awesome. Do we deserve it? But He loves us, yeah. and He gives it to us. Amen. He gives it to us. Amen. He has not given us that spirit of fear. No. In 2 Timothy 1.7, but he's given us the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Turn with me to Proverbs. We're going to look in chapter 3. Proverbs 
Proverbs 3. It's when the battle comes. When you're facing the things in your life. How many are you facing battles right now? Mm -hmm. How many are you facing things right now? Amen. Or you know people who are. This scripture is for you. This scripture is for them. Share it. Give it out. Look at what it says in, in chapter 3. We look at verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Amen. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do. Amen. And he will show you which path to take. Thank you, Jesus. He directs you. He promises you victory. This is what he does. Turn with me going back to Romans chapter 8. You're very familiar with this scripture. But in Romans chapter 8, look at what it says in verse 37, in case you have forgotten, let this be a reminder to all of us. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Romans 8.37. says no despite all these things despite all these things overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us amen thank you Lord amen amen, amen. God gives us his power God you, you see what he did in this battle for them that, that he caused this hail to fall down you know the hail back in I think it was 19 70 in Kansas, there was a, a big hail storm, and they, uh, as, as big as, uh, like almost two pounds, almost two pounds. So this is like one pound of hamburger right here, right? So maybe double this size, right? Hail falling wow. from the sky, they experienced that. But do you know what it says? Turn with me to the book of Revelation, because I want you to see this. In the book of Revelation, chapter 16 Revelation chapter 16 verse 21 there was a terrible hailstorm and hailstones weighing as much as 75 pounds fell from the sky onto the people below they cursed God because of the terrible plague of the hailstorm. Can you believe that? We, we haven't seen anything yet, but what, what I'm trying to tell you is that God moves on our behalf. And when we go to battle, he's fighting for us. It said in the passage of scripture that we just read that the battle, even though they were killing people and fighting and killing, one of the unique things that God did was he caused five different kingdoms five different kings and their people to unite together to come against the people of Israel to come against them and he brought all those five kingdoms together and God caused them to it was like wow thank you God you brought all my enemies all at once to, to kill me thank you because you know God was fighting and he caused that hailstorm to to kill uh, so many much more than the than the people the children of Israel the, the Israelites right there in that passage that what they were doing well they were just kind of helping off the Lord but who knows that you and I both know that God doesn't need our help no. he don't need our help at all and yet he went and, and, and just imagine the hails falling do you think that they had to worry as they were trying to fight and kill and war against the enemy as we're fighting and warring against the enemy are, are we fearful that one of those hails uh, are going to fall on our head no need to worry because god aims perfectly Amen. he aims perfectly where those hails are, uh, are supposed to fall and he killed it you know you're looking at you know uh uh, uh even if it was a I don't know how big they were, but even if it was one pound or two pounds big falling from the sky, they're coming down at about 100 miles an hour. Yes. And, and as they're coming down, boom, can you imagine a solid piece of ice hitting you and killing you instantly? And that's what God did. And not only that, they got the kings 
and they put him, they hid him in a, in a, in a, in a cave and they pulled it all full of, of rocks, big rocks, and left him in there while the battle went on and until it was all finished and over. And then they went and they got them and they brought them out. And then it was then we see in the next chapter from um, that we were reading in that we see in Joshua chapter uh, 10 or 11. Let me go back over there. And I'm going to read that in closing. Joshua chapter 10 in verse 16. It says that during the battle, the five kings escaped and hid in a cave. When Joshua heard that they had been found, he issued the command, cover the opening of the cave with large rocks. Place guards at the entrance to keep the kings inside. The rest of you continue chasing the enemy and cut them down from the rear. Don't give them a chance to get back to their towns for the Lord your God has given you the victory over them. So Joshua and the Israelites army continued the slaughter and completely crushed the enemy they totally wiped out the five five armies except for a tiny remnant that managed to reach their fortified town then the israelites returned safely to joshua in the camp at makita and after that no one dared to speak even a word against israel then joshua said remove the rocks covering the opening of the cave and bring the five kings to me so they brought the five kings out of the cave, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon. And when they brought them out, Joshua told the commanders of his army, come and put your feet on the necks of the kings. And they did as they were told. And he says, don't ever be afraid or discouraged, Joshua told the men. Be strong and courageous, for the Amen. Lord is going to do this to all your Amen. enemies. Amen. Amen. And then Joshua killed each of the five kings and impaled them on five sharpened poles where they hung until evening. And as the sun was going down, Joshua gave instructions for the bodies of the kings to be taken down from the poles, thrown into the cave where they had been hiding. And then they covered the opening of the cave with a pile of large rocks which remains to this very day. We, we don't need to be so nice when it comes to the Word of God. If someone comes and's trying to take your Bible away from you, if somebody's come, what are you, are you, are you going to just let them take it? I mean, we say no, but until it actually happens, I think we're going to be like in shock. And our reaction is going to be different for every one of us. But these are the things that, that you need to establish yourself. You need to be grounded, rooted in the Word of God. Amen. So much so that whatever comes, because if you say no, you can't have it. You don't know what's going to happen to you. But it doesn't matter because we're our eternity Amen. is in heaven. Amen. I don't know about you. But 50, 60, 70, 80 years goes by very quickly. Yes, it does. But eternity never ends. Amen. And that Amen. is what we believe. We may believe in heaven. We believe in Almighty God. We believe that we're going to have these transformed bodies, yes. these, these, these spiritual, that's going to be in the presence of Almighty God in His presence. Thank you, Lord. We worry much more about today, but we better always be right with God. Yeah. Every situation in our life works out for the best. We know that. We understand Romans 8.28. We know that. But I want us to know that God enables us to live above our circumstances. Amen. That we're not weak and impoverished no. spiritually. That we are strong and that we can have peace in any given situation. We have that victory. We have victory. You have victory against the flesh. Yeah. You have victory against the emotional disturbances. Amen. You have victory over Hallelujah. these things. This, this, this is what he did. 
that lying devil who tries to come and steal the joy out of God's people has succeeded too many times. Amen. We take it back right now in the name of Jesus. God grants us yes. his power. God gives us his, this victory. God moved in that hailstorm. God moved and he, and he showed mightily his victory. And he also moves in the heavens. God is constantly intervening for us spiritually, supernaturally, all the time that they that they needed he gave it to them Amen. he let the sun stay up more than a normal day he let the moon stay up so that they could have the light they could have what they needed in order to get the job in order to have that victory did he just give them a victory no they worked for it they fought hard are you fighting for your victory Amen. because it's there waiting for you and god is going to intervene on your behalf but you can't just sit there with a plate and ask him to serve you victory you got to do something too Amen. you got to believe you got to trust you got to stand firmly upon his word god moves god gives us time you ever feel like you're running out of time but you pray and ask the lord to let the time go by slow so you can get everything done i i have seen it time and time again that he extends my time throughout the day and I realize how much I got done that needed to get done. He gives us time and he fights our battles if we let him. Yeah. He does it. That's the God that we serve. Amen. Amen. My God. Amen. Amen. You, you got to rebuke and bind that line demo. And you know what? One of the biggest things is pride. That's going to cause the downfall of man. Just like pride was in the beginning, pride always comes before a fall. That's what the Word of God says. Pride comes before a fall. Now, I don't know about you, I don't want to fall. Amen. It hurts. It does hurt. I fell down yesterday. I know. Yeah, as we were walking back from the the march video, and I was wearing some old shoes where the front was starting to split in the front, and it kind of folded in front of me, it caused me to stumble. Could have been a lot worse, right? <laughs> Adelita says she was praying for me and praying for me because she was right there when it happened. And she goes, how do you feel? I don't feel anything at all from that fall yesterday. Yesterday I did, but she prayed and I was healed. Amen? Amen. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you, Jesus. And we pray for one another. We encourage one another by the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good. Father, we thank you for today. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your word. I pray right now, Lord God, that you would just... Father, help us to stand firmly, unwaveringly. Father, upon your word, Lord, for you are a good God. We thank you for your words of encouragement. We thank you for your promises. We thank you that we're victors, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that, Father, we've already, Father, are, 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 are conquerors in you. We thank you, Father, for everything that you do. Father, just take over the rest of this time today, Lord God. We, we give our heart to you. Father, may we be at peace throughout this day. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.